Chapter 2, New Empires in the Americas. Section 1, European Set Sail. The Vikings were from a land called Scandinavia. If you're looking at the map here, this is a large map of Scandinavia here. It consists of Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark. If you look at the bigger map here of Europe, this is Scandinavia right here. Anyway, the Vikings come from there, and they will be the very first European group of people to make contact with North America. Not Christopher Columbus, not the Pilgrims, it's the Vikings who will be the first ones over to North America. Now, they were known as fierce warriors, and uh, they developed this reputation of killing if they came to your area. They raided countries throughout Europe and, you know, sent the fear of God into people. They rode on these big ships with big kind of dragon heads on them, so it scared people when they arrived. They traveled all over the place. Sometimes they were ruthless. Sometimes they killed people for no reason. But other times they developed trading networks with people. They would reach all the way into what we now know as Russia by sailing up rivers and such, but trading with these different groups of people. In 1000 AD, a Viking named Leif Erikson sailed from Norway all the way over to the North American coast. Having been blown off course by a storm, he wasn't trying to get to the shores of North America, but he was kind of blown off. Now, he was actually trying to get to a place called Greenland. Didn't quite make it, but he did land in this area right here, which is in today Canada, but this is called Labrador. And this part down here is called Newfoundland. Now, if you look at the word Newfoundland right here, the Vikings, of course, named it New Found Land. That's why it's called Newfoundland today. Uh, so it is believed, you know, the Vikings land in this area, see where the red is. And they will travel down the coast of North America, too, maybe even reaching as far south as New England. Now, if you look at the name Leif Erikson, it tells you a little bit about his heritage because his father's name was Eric the Red. Now, if you look at his last name, and this is kind of traditional, he is the son of Eric. That's why his last name is Erikson. So the Vikings will establish uh, a settlement, a North American settlement here at a place called Vinland, which today was not Newfoundland. Um, but there are numerous reasons why that didn't last. Um, it's kind of isolated. I mean, there wasn't really many people there. And they were constantly being attacked by Native Americans. So that would prompt the Vikings to eventually give up any colonization of this land and head back over to uh, Europe. Now, a little side story here about the whole idea of Greenland and why it's called Greenland. Obviously, there's the place called Iceland over in Scandinavia. In Iceland, you know, its, it's name is kind of misleading because Iceland is really quite green. It's got lots of green grass, highly active volcano-wise, but lots of green grass, whereas Greenland here, not so much. It's mainly ice and rock and dirt, you know. It's not very good for uh, growing crops or anything like that. But they named it Greenland so that if an invader would want to conquer anything of the Vikings, they would go to Greenland because there was nothing there. Not Iceland, which was rich with great land. The Vikings will not return to North America. But, people started becoming interested in that, in exploring new lands. One of those guys is a Portuguese man named Prince Henry, and his nickname was The Navigator. And he um, was responsible for advances that would make exploration more successful. Now, he never went out on an exploration voyage himself, but he wanted to have other people go do the exploring. And so he is going to establish a school of navigation. He also builds an observatory. He finances research by map makers and shipbuilders. He brought in the best map makers, the best shipbuilders, not only to do those things, but also to teach at the navigation school uh, students to do those things as well. 
He also paid for expeditions to explore the coast of Africa. Now, what Portugal, Prince Henry in Portugal, and a lot of European countries are trying to do is get to Asia. They're looking for a shortcut. They don't want to cross over the Mediterranean Sea. It, it's controlled by, you know, various groups, whether it's the Muslims or the Venetians. And traveling through would cost them a lot of money. They'd have to pay taxes. And so Prince Henry is looking to maybe find a way to get to Asia without having to go through the Mediterranean Sea. Because of Prince Henry's navigation schools, you have people who are developing new te technological advances to help in the area of exploration. One of those is called the Astrolab. The Astrolab enables navigators to use stars to chart locations. So this is the instrument right here, the Astrolab. And this diagram kind of shows you how to use it, where you line up your instrument with a star. It kind of gives you an idea of where you're located on the seas. Another advance is called a caravel. A caravel is a ship that uses triangular sails, as you can see on this diagram right here. The triangular sails make uh, the ship um, move easier against the wind. It's also a smaller ship and a little bit quicker. The Portuguese had many reasons to explore the world. First, they wanted to find new sea routes, like I mentioned before, to develop additional trade with Asia. Second, they wanted to spread Christianity to other parts of the world and convert more people. And finally, they wanted to learn more about Asia and its culture. They heard stories from a guy named Marco Polo, who had spent many years in China under the rule of Kublai Khan. Uh, it's kind of like a sidekick, sideman. Uh, but, and they heard, because... Marco Polo wrote a book telling about his adventures in China, and so people heard about that and wanted to go out. They were fascinated with the Chinese and with other parts of Asia. So the part Portuguese are going to start this uh, attempt to find Asia, find another route to Asia. And the first Portuguese person is, in 1488 was uh, Bartolomeu Dias, and he will lead an expedition from Portugal, along the western coast of Africa, discovering, you know, exploring all different parts of Africa, and he made it all the way down to the tip of Africa, which is known as the Cape of Good Hope. So looking at our map, here's Portugal up here. The yellow line indicates Diaz's journey, and he not only, I mean, he just didn't sail down the coast. He would get out, and they would explore different parts of Africa, and they made it all the way down here to the tip. Cape of Good Hope. In 1497, Vasco da Gama will go one step further. He not only makes it to the Cape of Good Hope, that's the red line here, but he will continue on and he will make it all the way across into India. So the Portuguese will be the first European country to find another sea route to Asia. Now if you're looking at the map, you can see all the different little ports that... Um, the Gama stopped at like Mozambique, Mombasa, Malindi. Again, these explorers are not just sailing straight on. They're stopping at different places to explore, maybe to trade. Now, as the Portuguese are stopping on their journeys, they're going into Africa, they're exploring the coast of Africa, and they come across native peoples, and they will trade with the native group, the native tribes in Africa. They'll negotiate for gold, they will get ivory, and you start to see the beginnings of a slave trade, where they negotiate for slaves. Because of this new wealth and power, Portugal becomes the leading country in the world when it comes to exploration. But other European countries will launch their own voyages of exploration. They're also trying to get to Asia, but they're looking for other routes now that the Portuguese have gone around Africa. Other groups now will be looking for different routes to get to Asia, maybe even quicker. That's the end of section one.